Yes, sure. Start recording. So Alvaro Hernandez from Mexico. Where do you live in Mexico? Guadalajara. It's the second biggest city here. Which is, um, is that pretty close to, that's just south of the border, right? I uh, know, it's in the middle of the country. Oh, it's in the middle? Let me yeah. look at that geometry. Jalisco, it's called the state. Okay. It oh, Jay. it's way... Oh yeah, middle there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. So, what are your thoughts on this? So, um, tell me more wh where you're at. So, obviously, right now, there's, um, you know, the Steam Camps are on hold, so we've got, like, a one-year yeah. vacation and stuff. But we do want to run e remote events. I do appreciate your notions about making this relevant to other countries besides the Western world, because right now it's priced for the Western world. We could develop ways yeah. to do it for um, other locations. And, of course, I, I think that becomes irrelevant within, I mean, at least within eight years, but I can't promise any sooner. It's like when we can do the micro factories anywhere, uh, I think the productivity can arise anywhere and that therefore that's not an issue in, in about eight years when we finish the global village construction set that's our timeline but for now there's real constraints um, as far as your role what maybe you can start by seeing what what would you like to see as the ideal outcome of what can happen here well, the goals that you have stated in your expectations work, I think, are really great for the purpose. Uh, I mean, I know that we need to develop the technology first and make it easy enough to be replicable in other places. And I think that's the goal of the first steam camps, to make it easier for others to start, to start a micro factory both in, in the how-tos and the knowledge and the uh, tutorials in how to do it and also like to ease the technology adoption like which tools do you need first to build up on, until the uh, final global village construction set yeah now what what do you do for a living right now now I am looking for a job. I was uh, expecting an answer from an uh, interview I had for uh, a robotics position here in the government as a director of an academy. But COVID, so that's uh, stuck. And I am. I started looking for other opportunities, and that's how I found you. Yeah, yeah. Um. yeah now how do you think that w what's your vision for uh, i mean given that we're on hold for doing certain things because of the virus we can't really run events what are your thoughts on how that could roll out do you have any thoughts on how that could roll out in the immediate future i think uh, it's a good thing because the three months frame frame time you had actually was kind of uh limited and i would like to have more time to, uh, to uh, start the first events once you got like the layout for how to do it it will be easier but the first one and the uh, getting the team involved i think it's not realistic to have a time frame because people can uh, take a lot of time to get into into the team yeah so uh -huh. i would use the time we have the extra time we have to prepare the team better and the events yeah yeah um actually for example the last event at the hackathon we began working uh, like eight months before the event and we had a team and we began to request for uh, sponsors and we discovered we had to wait on the, the next um, 
I don't know the word in English, like when you pay taxes and you have to this span of time, uh, you have approximately six months here, here in Mexico and you pay uh, taxes and you have your accountability send it to the government. And during that time, it's really hard to get sponsors. You need to get them uh, when they have the money and the possibility. And that can be three months before the event and having a long time span, it's better to achieve that. It's true. So you, you'd you be thinking along the lines that, so you do have a like a pretty extensive like uh, plan for how to roll things out. I'm just gonna kind of paste this. I think it's just like what I can see beforehand, but I know things will be changed on the way. Right, right. Um, I mean, what would be a, Let's see. So if we look at the kind of time time frames that you have laid out, uh, let's see how how that would fit w in terms of possibility. Um, where is that? You can see my screen. Yeah, I can. Okay. So here's um, here's this doc, and let's take a look at. Yeah, I mean. I, I, yeah, I mean, you do a good job in terms of like thinking about, th thinking through of what's what's needed. Um, Thank you. So, let's back up a little bit. So right now we've got, uh, so Andreas, actually, I don't know if you've seen some of the latest videos on team meetings andreas from sweden no i haven't yeah from sweden he's he uh got funding to work on this full time in terms of developing the steam camp so he's doing that right and yeah like i don't know how he did it he got some kind of a grant or something but he's able right. to do it for the whole year and and we also got 180 degree consulting involved in producing a marketing plan so that's a thing that um, it's a university club, the 180 degree consulting. Nice. Um, I can show you. So Alvaro. So I'm, I'm putting this log, I'm putting this on your log, Alvaro log, but so you can take a review of that, but take a look at a page called 180 DC. 180 degree Great. consulting. I send it a request for an account. I don't know if you already got it. Um, in your wiki page. Oh, you should have uh, gotten that. You haven't. Uh, you haven't seen that. I I remember not in my mail. approving that, check. but maybe not. Um. So take a uh, well. I don't know what to do if you haven't gotten it, maybe try again, but um, I wanted to show you the 180 DC link. So that's the organization that within two months we should have a, so there's more info. If you click on your log and here's a recording of our meeting and that's the current marketing plan that we're kind of looking at developing. Um, but what do you think? I mean, are there some things that, you know, can you put your weight behind a, a project like you know what you, what you try to write out i mean you mentioned some things about getting sponsorships versus paying attendees there's different mm -hmm. options but i mean if we talk about uh ability to make this self-sustaining what do you think that would be the the way to do that how would you see this rolled out uh because and first of all what is the time frame when you wrote the the work breakdown structure was that for a three month time frame were you thinking about a three month time frame can you hear me
Yeah, sorry. I was my iPad got blocked. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, I was hearing you. Um, about the time frame, I wasn't thinking in in a time frame in specific. I was just uh, putting down all the tasks that I could think and separate them in phases. I was actually beginning to add uh, approximately time that it would take to finish each task and then I will see like a realistic time frame for that amount of tasks. Um, mm -hmm. I will think um, six month preparations to get everything ready will be realistic and we can get um, enough time thanks to this situation. Mm -hmm. And okay, so and where do you have how much have you accounted for the curriculum and their being uh, finalized in the in your planning? Okay, see. let me see. Like item 22, curriculum yeah. prep. Uh, well, once we get the instructors, instructors, I think they will have different skills and ability sets. And maybe that will change how we develop the curriculum. So once we got them i will talk about how the, what, can we improve the the first curriculum for the first camp uh right now you are thinking about the open source tablet right yeah that is but also like for example the the next steam camp we're we're looking at is the filament making okay yeah which would really empower also, some yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, so that's that's, true. that's where we were thinking. Um, now, um, you know, I we've had a hard time getting the curriculum written by the instructors because it takes a long time. Yeah, I think does. that's something that we have to provide up front. That's that's the way we were going about it this time. So, say we do the filament maker in next Steam Camp. So, Andreas okay. is working on on refining that curriculum and, and basically putting together all that we have. So that's a task that needs to be done right now and it's in process. Right. Now, I would say that we've got maybe 50 to 75 percent of it written down, but I think, um, let's These say it's, yeah, it's, a it's a lot to make it really streamlined and, and yeah. effective. That's that's a whole whole different game. Also to the point that we can offer kits, we can offer this as modules, like smaller modules, like if you want to do just like one lesson. Um, but I wanted to ask you more like as far as your long term goals, um, I mean, would you be uh, like as far as a micro factory, you'd like to see that in your community in Guadalajara? Of course. Yeah, I would love to have one here. Can we get us? Um, do you have? OK, so let's let's so you're you're an important ingredient in terms of being an interested stakeholder. Do you think you can get some sponsorships from people like like Chambers of Commerce, do you have that? Or Rotary Club, do you have those kinds of things there? Yeah, I have been an entrepreneur here for eight years. Mm -hmm. I am used to the process of getting different institutions to help in different parts of the project. Mm -hmm. I will begin with Hacker Garage. It's a community that have its own house and they rent uh, office spaces for different uh, startups and other companies mm -hmm. but they have a, a really nice maker space in the first floor and a co-working space mm -hmm. i think that will be a great place to begin mm -hmm. also that's like option a option b i know that the government here in one of the municipalities is working to offer uh, uh, 
a maker space or some, somewhere where the kids could, could learn about robotics and electronics. Mm -hmm. And if we can get a collaboration with them, I actually have the connections to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say, hey, this is what we can do. This is open source. This is much cheaper than the other options. Oh, yeah. And we are also providing uh, support from experts. Uh, I think that would be even better. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Actually, the other option and the third one is the less probable, but maybe possible. It's with, with one of the universities here. We have like five, five big, big universities. And mm, I can, I know I can organize events inside each of these universities and get uh, visibility from the students to organize a collab collaborative project. That would be also really nice. Actually, that was part of my plan when I was organizing the Hack to Solve event, but uh, I didn't have the connections and I was plan to, to make it happen, just like the intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Universities is, I mean, I, if you look at some of our recent work, I, I do believe the university have a good place because we can talk about OSE chapters at universities, which run yeah. STEAM camps, which produce yeah, printers, yeah. which produce real products. Yeah, yeah. Be it Actually, an O-ring or a headlamp or a rubber tire, you can produce yeah. things. Yeah. Actually, using the steam, the micro factory or the steam camp as part of their curricula with certain teacher, for example, uh, mechatronics class or electronic uh, basics, could mean a big change in the experience for the students, like from uh, working on mostly useless projects to make something that really is working and collaborate with people with more knowledge than them would be great. Like the educational part, it's great. Well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, from useless to, to actual things that make a difference. That would be great. That's a big transformation that's needed, and um, I think the student experience would be amazing in that place. And that's where I think yeah. there's a good place for universities to do that. Like, I'm getting more clarity sure. on that, that that is indeed a um, really good and thing. Actually, yeah. now it's happening, happening something interesting because all the students are away from the classrooms. Everyone is studying from a computer yeah. and have no uh, connection with real projects. They are working in their house, not in the computer. Yeah. So one of the problems of achieving that is the politics inside the university, like, oh. like the coordinators of each career says, yes, go ahead and do it. And this teacher and this teacher will support you. That's the hard part because teachers are willing to help, but they are not willing to go extra mile and <laughs> go or uh, propose a project for the for the coordinator. Uh -huh. they, they will just say, no, nah, um, it's not re ready yet. So making a plan for like a, with an organization like you that have this trajectory and have the, this TED talk with all the, the, those views, I think will accelerate that process. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Like we don't want to put extra burden. That's that's an issue that comes up all the time. Like if you have a teacher, how do you free them up? Um, yeah. So what would be the best format for, for, I mean, okay, let's talk about strategy. So we're talking about university? Yeah. Okay, so at the university, what do you think is the best strategy to of how we can leverage what we have um maybe be the least invasive mm. for the current structure and add value over the structure that they already have for example not changing their curriculum but adding this new uh, 
in their college project to their class. Instead of working in team of fives inside each classroom, have this event um, happening in parallel with the school year. Okay. And offering students from different uh, universities join this team. We are going to solve this problem and replicate this solution. And we encourage the student to present the projects they have been working on in in with OSE or OSE mm -hmm. inside their their universities and with that will be like the first step like find students who are willing to put the work and then once the teachers and once the coordinators see the difference in the results be, before between the ones working with us and the other projects, they will start to appreciate the the benefits of the pro program. And actually, yeah, that will be maybe the first step. The second step, or maybe in parallel with the first one, is to develop a collaborative curriculum that the teachers can follow. Um, okay. Let me ask you about the first one. Is there space where there's in current classes, can you envision that there's, say there's a number of classes, let's say at multiple universities, can they actually switch curriculum to, okay, say they're um, some kind of a design class, we just simply substitute our stuff for theirs? I lost you. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, uh, did you hear my question? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, yes, I think it is a place. They they have a place for that, but it wouldn't be to be like just a small amount of classes inside all the. Um, all the year. Th that will be like the already working classes, but there are other options. For example, new careers or new schools have this problem where the teacher who was hired needs to develop the curriculum from zero. If we can find a class that have that, that situation, that is on that stage, it will be much more easier to implement our curriculum. It will be like, okay, you are saving me s some a big amount of uh, uh, hours yeah. that our teachers won't won't need to spend. So that will be like the great place. Do you know any people as such? Not in in university levels, maybe in junior highs, but uni universities, I, d I don't know one here that is new. Yeah, so that's kind of speculative now. Okay, that's a research and it's marketing a thing. It's speculative, but that's what happened when I was hired as a STEAM teacher yeah. in this junior high. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I had to develop the curriculum. Okay, but tell me more. Uh, so let's go back to what you said about universities. You said it seemed like you had a clear route where where the first thing is you mentioned was that we have teachers that are already willing. We, we collect a number of teachers to uh, collaboratively teach certain common content that then they collaborate on, then we, we insert that into their potential curriculum. So um, let me back up from that because the thinking that I've had before, or we talked about before, was that here's a class. It could be across many disciplines of many disciplines of design. It could be marketing, it could be business, it could be STEM or STEAM, it could be engineering. Yeah. And we approach them and say, okay, let's uh, do this was more for elementary schools where you have a, a steam teacher 
actually. So let's let's go back. To, let's actually go into high schools or elementary okay. schools. We have a STEAM teacher, and we talk to them. So there's okay. We ad identify STEAM teachers. We can do that. We can get yep. hundreds of them. We talk to them and say, "Would you like to try this? Uh, maybe even like one day out of your five days, you're shifting your curriculum to collaboration." Now it will definitely yeah. cover some common ground, like uh, like with what they're doing, because we have mechatronics and coding and printing and all this stuff. Yeah, we have a robust STEAM curriculum, and then can we say, okay, are you willing to simply collaborate on a bigger project? Is that kind of what you were implying before, or because that's the way we're thinking about it? That's a way you can okay. identify a bunch of Is teachers and make them an offer, saying, okay, this actually gets a load off you. Because now one day out of your five, you don't have to do anything or, or let's say, you know, we kind of collaborate with them. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Here in Guadalajara, education is a big topic between different communities I have been part of. So there are a lot of enthusiastic teachers that will be interested in that. Um, yeah. Uh, let me back up there. So lots of enthusiastic teachers. Uh, why do you say that? You say that uh, is Guadalajara or this particular situation around you more unique, like th that lends itself to high interest in this or you just I say that in so. general? Yeah, we are like, um, we have a really strong hub of communities. We have communities around education. We have communities ar uh, around technolo different technologies and we used to have uh, one meetup every month of each of those communities and there are different events where you can you can find the same people uh, for example oh that's the guy who was presenting this conference in in that event and now is going to this other thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah i think it's kind of of unique it's well I know it's not as strong and as in other cities here in in Mexico but maybe in US you have more t more things like like this uh, you think in the US we might have more of this Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you think, uh, sorry, you said that in, you think in the US we might have more of that or? Yeah, at least I have researched a lot of educational startups that are mm -hmm being born there okay well okay so. yeah yeah and so let's to review our assets we have you so you're a good stakeholder within the community you're interested in osc work you're interested in open source as demonstrated by your involvement with one community open source project which is good and uh you're a steam teacher and you've taught tell me more about the the steam thing you you have done was that just for like this one event or was were you actually te a teacher or yeah i got both i was a teacher for six months and i was uh organizing this camp this hackathon so when i was a, a teacher my approach to the class was actually different i tried to make it personalized to every student, instead of getting a curriculum and each student follow it, I turn it around. I propose something, some topic, and my goal was to find what was the interest of each student. And once I, I found it, to push it into a project that they could work on during all the semester. And I got really exciting results with some of the of the students. Like they was making, they were creating um, 
little organization to support the spiders inside the school. Uh, to support what? Sp sp spiders. Spiders? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they found really beautiful spiders in, inside the school. They took pictures, they found the scientific names of the spiders and how they were affected with the uh, pesticides and the paints of the school mm. and made this interesting report about this and their the idea was actually to begin a, this organization the spider club yeah to get to know more about the spiders and spread the knowledge that they are there and they need care mm -hmm. and others students began to learn all these different things but the problem was that for me some of them was learn learning really interesting stuff really important like how to find information in internet how to learn to use new tools once you know you need them but they were not as important for the perspective of the directors of the school because they didn't follow the curricula they were they was thinking on yeah. for example they they were these two kids that well like about four that they really love football soccer and they love to do trick shots and they were learning how to take footage and videos of of these trick shots and the angles and how you did the videos and how to add music and the lightings and that stuff but it was not really something the adults would appreciate unless they are involved in those kind of things so that was part of heart like the the students appear to be playing but they were learning so different mm -hmm. yeah uh, tell me more about in terms of your education what's what's the service enterprise engineering it's like industrial engineer are you familiar with that yep. term mm -hmm. it's like that but without production and more of information systems oh wow okay that's pretty cool uh, social en service enterprise engineering so this is product engineering for for services yeah yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, um, excellent. Okay, but let's okay let's let's see if we can identify some clear path to go for it. How about I mean, do you know your? How about we pitch pitch the idea of the open source microfactory with a small startup budget to the local local chamber of commerce, and we see if they bite. Here and in my then, city, or where? Say it again. Here in Guadalajara or yes to yes you so local places. chapters so okay. the idea here is that we go distributed and we develop in parallel okay. open source and okay. we pitch them and then we can say okay here's the products we can make hey we can make, teach you how to build 3d printers they're the best Great. in the world most modular easy to build look we have the only printer in the world that can that is designed for distributive enterprise meaning that you can build it readily not by very complex supply chains, but high quality with very basic supply chains. Um, simplicity and all of that, lifetime design, that's, that's yeah. our strong point. Yeah, I think, I think that can be done. Um, that could be a startup by its own. And that's a startup in itself. Some, what, are we, what if we some, pitch that? Yeah, we actually could get some funding for that. And what well, if we pitch that with now, the first? Some support, yes. Um, I would say that the first, since the travel is a little limited, I would say we coordinate along the idea of, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Um, you want to try to, are you cutting out? Cause, um. Do you want to try Messenger? No, it's because my iPad is being blocked. Actually, it's not mine. It's from my brother. So I was just 
keep touching the the screen to ah. this. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So, what do you think of that? So maybe, and then coordinate around the next steam camp, which would be around the micro factory for the plastic production. And yeah, actually, if there is a plan to make uh, a steam camp here, yep. doing it around 3D printing, uh, 3D printer will be great. Here we have some. Actually, in Hacker Garage, there are some, but they are not working. And mm -hmm. they are they are they are interested in them. But there are no no people maintaining the printers. So what printers do they have? Uh, I think it's a Colibri. I don't remember the model. And uh -huh. there are about two. Who's that? Colibri printer. But I don't remember the model or the exact uh, link. I could find out. Colibri 3D. Never heard of that. What is that stuff? Is that um, is that a Mexican company? Maybe I am not really familiar with it. I haven't used it. Let's see that. Is that your? That would be your. Yeah, that's a Mexican company. Okay, cool. Oh. Well, you'd have um, a global comp. You have a multinational compete with them then. <laughs> the OSC multinational, yeah. Uh, Hacker Garage, we will probably go with the people who is maintaining the printers. If someone goes in and says, "Hey, I want to make the OSE 3D printer here," they will say, "Great! I start working on it. Here are the tools." Yeah. Well, I would say pitch it to. Here's what I would suggest: pitch it to the. Um, see if you can get entrepreneur-minded backers. So that means like a chamber of commerce. Do you know any people okay. there, by any chance? Yeah, but here, Chamber of Commerce is like a traditional business models, not really fan of risks, but there are other, other organizations that are aimed for startups mindset, okay. which is more risk, uh, and they have more innovation in their processes, and I think th those will be better. Okay, yeah, yeah. And um, so should we work on that then? Do that, plus the promise of a steam camp. Now at, at the at the steam camp, what we're planning on doing right now is uh, developing a, well, I mean, cutting the CNC, cutting the parts ourselves. Now, I would say we can propose a, a budget for a 3D printer, a CNC torch table, and a micro factory for plastic. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, so the plan will be get the money to build the CNC and the 3D printer. Is that what I understand? Yep. Okay. Uh, so get funding for uh, micro factory. Now, what about the training part? So training. So what is the package we're saying? We're saying we're going to train. You're the client. You're the guy. You. So we're going to train Alvaro, right? Okay. So you're, you're literally applying for yourself because you're the stakeholder that's closest to success on this or closest in terms of being a strong stakeholder. And you're going to run this. You're going to start a business. Yeah? Interesting. Yeah. 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 So the model I could follow is like create a micro factory and implement steam camps here. Yes. Okay. And start producing 3D printers. Yeah, that that's really interesting. And about the cost of of um, assistance for the camp, I I think it's really limitative because uh, the prices you are offering now are about the same of uh, high end semester in a university so it's not that um, accessible yeah yeah we have to work out a different price structure so um, yeah so maybe sponsorship are, are possible here and maybe another option is to uh, price the 
printed, the 3D printed uh, solution, and participants can go going for free, but the ones who pays is the one who gets the printer at the yeah. end. Yeah, there's different ways. You can certainly do that. And then there's the kind of development which revolves around 3D printing more of the parts. So you can go even into the pulleys, the belts, uh, the frame, uh, yeah, yeah. the bearings, linear bearings. You can print them out of advanced, uh, out of palm, polyoxymethylene, something like that, the Delrin it's called. Um, so we can propose let's do this that the focus of this is reduce like uh, cost optimization and performance optimization so that you can get the printer at even lower cost and it's yeah i could see the benefits in that yeah absolutely actually for, for the uh, high-end uh, elementary schools and high schools to have someone who is uh, knowledgeable enough to fix their own printer as a teacher is a big plus like no maintenance costs, the teacher is going to cover that part. I think it's interesting for them. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then, especially if we do the the low cost recycling micro factory, you can yeah. print. Like right now, the precious plastic is going out of control. Their shredder costs two thousand two hundred euros. We can do much better than that if we're really smart about how we do it and different design principles. Right. And you can also do a lot of that being 3D printed if you have free filament that you can get from the waste stream. So there's a yeah. lot of lot of cost optimization that can happen there. So we can do that and we can propose that yeah, sure. explicitly. So um, can you s start writing this up and I can I can collaborate with you on that? Yeah, I could. Uh, what about the connection between these and the global vision of the steam camps? Oh man, I mean that's the essence. So first, I mean we didn't go there yet, but the idea is that we have now you fully capable to pr to participate in the open source uh, cordless drill incentive challenge, okay. where the explicit outcome of that is the professional grade cordless drill that yeah, you're going to start amazing. producing in Guadalajara. Yeah, that's really great, and. So this is happening in your head before the we got 12 parallel steam camps running? Like no, it was supposed camp? to happen September uh, the 1st. It's probably going to be delayed. But I don't know. The September is still, we still have time if that were to happen in September. But right now, everything is kind of up in the air, right? Yeah. Now, you asked about the greater vision. The greater vision is that we have 12 by 12. 12 steam camps with 12 people starting uh, minimum. So we have 144 people for five days. Imagine if those people are collaboratively literate, they can produce a product during each steam camp. So yeah. some, some kind of product that's added to the open source everything store that can be manufactured in your micro factory. So yeah, that will be really interesting. That's the, that's the pitch. Okay, great. Mm, okay. As for myself as a role as event planner no i will uh, wait on that and I start on the micro factory startup well i think the the event planning yeah like the startup i think is probably primary the event planner like we definitely i mean see if we can collaborate on that like i don't know how that's going to roll out but that's a role that we need to fill uh whether it's you whether it's andreas or i mean we're going to need to fulfill the marketing and organizational aspects of the steam camps yeah. so but we can wait on it as far as the details of of how exactly that gets executed yeah yeah, yeah. but i think okay, what we're talking about right now i think that's fungible and i think that can get people excited so yeah yeah let's do it yeah i am thinking about in i would love to work in this uh micro factory but I know it won't produce money soon enough for me, so I would have to find another uh, income stream apart from this. Um, when do you think, like if, yeah. if with a proposal, say going through some of the startup channels, when do you think funding can materialize from that? At least uh, four or five months from now. It's not that fast. 
Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Maybe, no, I, everything is kind of uh, slowed down by, mm -hmm. the, by the virus, so it will probably be more time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll think about if there's any way to accelerate those schedules, because, I mean, um, maybe we could talk about a minimum viable package, because right now, I mean, we're still selling printers and a um, little bit. Uh, so that the idea that we already have certain products that can be right now redeemed in value, that's a thing we might want to take a look at more carefully, because, I mean, right now, uh, the question would be, like, say for the 3D printer, like, um, how much build experience do you have with tangibly building things? Well, I made uh, this uh, full expanding machine that worked with IoT. Mm -hmm. like from your cell phone, you mm -hmm. click a button on a, w a web page and open a door in this locker kind of vending machine. Huh. I used uh, acrylic and some mm, aluminum profiles yep. to build it up. Yeah. And yeah, I have worked also with Plasti Madera. I don't know the word in English, like wood. Wood, that wood is pla made plast of plastic. plastic yeah. wood composite. Yeah. Extruded. Well, we can do that with, with the film and making infrastructure, plastic wood yeah. composites, yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Well, I mean, I would just throw out to you, let's let's look at how we could think about, like, how long would it take you? Take a look at the printers, the D3D Pro, and we're just going to release a new one, which is a 12-inch bed version of that pretty soon. But, I mean, see if you want to, if there's opportunities, you think that you can learn to produce it and start making it to bootstrap fund yourself. Because, I, I mean, there's there's a revenue model there already that's that I think is viable. Like selling the pr printers or the 3D printing service? Uh, the 3D just printing service just here in Guadalajara is really crowded. There are a lot of options. Not service, but, but, but actually making the printers. The printers, let me see. Yeah, I could, I could validate that business model. Evaluate that, because I mean, that doesn't, you know, you can ship to through the, you can be like, ideally, we. I mean, I'd like to be talking about OSE national chapters so you can take be the the point of contact for Mexico, the le taking leadership in Mexico for that. Yeah. Yeah. So think about that as well. Interesting. Let's um, let's continue the discussion. Okay. Great. 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 Yeah, I will look into it. So what's our what's our next follow up to to check in on our thoughts on this? So let me read. Um, all I can about the 3D printer yep. and the uh, details in how to produce it. Visit Hacker Garage and check out which tools I will need uh, and which one, which ones I already have. And make a business model, and then we can talk again. Let's uh, do that to see. Yeah. When well, do you want to check in again? Like a couple of weeks or? Yeah, a week and a half, maybe. Okay. Yeah, let me know when you're ready and let's set up a call. Yeah, sure. I will send an email. Excellent. So on our website, take a look at our products, which are the D3D Pro and the D3D Universal. That t tells you about them. So take a look at that as well. Uh, and I have this. Uh, take a look at Alvaro log, and I'll post the. Uh, I'll post the uh, video as soon as we're done here. All right. Great. Excellent. Great, great to have you on board here, Alvaro. And yeah, hopefully uh, can make something work here. Yes, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care then. You too. Bye-bye.